The police receive a report and rush to a house. But when they broke down the door to enter the locked room, they are shocked by what they see. The blood is all over the floor. Your friend lies beside a corpse and has become a murder suspect. It looks like a usual Friday evening until you meet Gideon at the police station. Since you became his assistant, you've handled three weird cases. But this time, his face is especially grim. He says it's a locked room murder, and the only suspect is Tom. You fiercely shake your head, thinking Tom is the police captain and Gideon's best friend. There's no way he could be a murderer. You two sit outside the interrogation room and see Tom sit inside. He seems to be in a trance and looks like a different person. Tom utters to his boss Matt, "I don't know why I was lying in that room." I only recall dining at Pistol Joe's restaurant and then being woken up by you guys. I I think I was drugged. Matt asks, "Why were you at Pistol Joe's restaurant?" Tom says, "Five years ago, when he was committing an armed robbery, he was caught on the spot by me. Recently, he got out of jail and came here to visit me, saying he had introspected about his life and had decided to start a new life by starting a restaurant. He also thanked me for catching him and giving him the opportunity to leave Daddy again. Then he invited me to his restaurant for a food tasting. I was really happy for him, but in the middle of the food tasting, my tummy ached and I took a dump in the restroom. Matt asks, "Can you describe the decor of his restaurant?" Tom scratches his head. It's quite elegant. Every table was covered with a white tablecloth, and I was sitting at table five. Do you know who the dead person beside you was? Sure, I often patrolled the territory of Daddy Gan, and he's the mob boss. Daddy, what's your impression of Daddy? He's only an acquaintance, but a short man like him could lead the gang. He had a knack for something. Do you have any personal vendetta against him? No. Matt nods and leaves the room to make a phone call. Then he talks to Tom. Pistol Joe said you've never been to his restaurant. Pistol Joe is different from what you imagined. He's tall and strong, but speaks with elegance. Please don't call me Pistol Joe. Now I'm Restaurant Joe. Yes, I did come here to thank Tom, but I didn't invite him to my restaurant. This restaurant is the key to my new life. I've been busy making sure the servers can recite the menu with confidence, and all equipment has been sterilized. I wouldn't feel comfortable inviting Tom to taste the dishes before they have been perfected. After Joe leaves, Matt enters the meeting room and comes out with a green face. He looks Tom in the eye and says, "Now all the evidence is against you. First, we found the murder knife in that room, and only your fingerprints have been found on the knife. Second, that room was a locked room without window or secret passage, and the door was locked from the inside, so we could only enter by breaking down the door." Therefore, it's impossible for anyone else to be the murderer. Moreover, only yours and Daddy's shoe prints have been found in that room, and only Daddy's fingerprints have been found on the door lock. There's no trace of a third person. Tang says, "But you found drugs in my system, and I was framed. If you search Joe's restaurant, you should be able to find traces of my visit." Matt shakes his head. Our application for a search warrant has been denied, cause there's no evidence that Joe had been there, and it was a locked room. Tom leans forward. We fought together for eight years. Don't you trust me? Matt says. We surely want to trust you, but the evidence speaks for itself. I'm sorry to tell you that we think you visited Daddy at his home. For some reason, you entered the room together, and he locked the door. You're much stronger than he, and it's easy for you to slash him several times. Then you swallowed pills and pretended to have been drugged. <sighs> You'll be in jail for at least ten years. Tom lowers his head, and you feel sorry for him. You recall his laughter when you first met him, and he treated you to a table full of fast food. He's been a nice person since he was little. He stopped the classmates from bullying Gideon and attended the high school in another area to be Gideon's companion. As a policeman, he always caught the suspects in the least harmful way and aspired to make his family proud. But no good deed goes unpunished, and this is totally unfair. 
Tom suddenly raises his head. You said you can't get a search warrant because there is no evidence that Joe had been there and it was a locked room. So if the evidence and the solution to the locked room can be found, you'll be able to search Joe's restaurant, right? Matt says, yes, but it's almost mission impossible. Tom stares at the one-way mirror of the interrogation room. Bro, I can't see you, but I believe you can save me. After listening to Tom, Gideon's face becomes grimmer. He asks you, which leads should we follow? Please tell me after 10 seconds. After you utter your answer, Matt comes out of the interrogation room. Gideon says to him, We've come up with several leads to follow. First, does Joe have a motive for murdering Daddy? And did he contact Daddy after getting out of jail? Second, who made that police report? Third, only Tom's and Daddy's shoe prints have been found in that room. But is it possible that Joe wore shoes identical to Tom's or Daddy's when he entered that room? Fourth, was there any weird stuff in that room or at Daddy's home? Tom's subordinate Fred comes over and says, I just heard that Joe's restaurant will open tomorrow. Gideon frowns, we must hurry up. Once the guests enter the restaurant, it's very likely the evidence will be destroyed. Next day around noon, you and Gideon stand in front of Joe's restaurant and have a bad feeling about the situation. The restaurant is packed with guests, and the tablecloths are pink instead of white. It seems Joe has changed the tablecloths and destroyed the evidence. More and more guests arrive at the restaurant, and in the evening, you two meet Matt at the police station. Matt says, we've only found several clues that are both useful and useless. Gideon nods. Tom told me about Joe before, saying Joe was a dead shot and was extraordinarily calm. When Tom spotted Joe committing an armed robbery, Joe immediately ran away, wiped his fingerprints off the gun, and threw the gun into a trash can. I believe he's well prepared this time, but we can seize on his mistake. Matt says, Okay, I have the following clues. First, Daddy called Joe after Joe got out of jail, saying he couldn't find a dead shot like Joe and hoped Joe could rejoin Daddy again. He emphasized that he had tried to bail Joe out but had failed, and Joe agreed to meet with him. Gideon asks, had Daddy really tried to bail Joe out? Matt replies, no, Joe had worked himself to death for Daddy for five years, but Daddy denied any responsibility for the robbery. Besides, the police report was made from a public phone and robot voice was used, so we don't know who the caller is, but we've made some progress regarding the shoes. Tom's shoes were customized and weren't available elsewhere. Daddy's shoes were only available in an exclusive store. We found before the murder, a man wearing shades had bought shoes identical to Daddy's at the store, and the CCTV footage shows that man looked like Joe. Gideon's eyes light up. Great. Matt smiles while talking. We've also found something weird at Daddy's home. Members of Daddy Gang said Daddy always put his cell phone in the pocket. But we found Daddy's phone on the cabinet outside that lock room, and the phone had played a file of footstep sound. Gideon nods. I suppose Joe already knew Daddy was cheating but played dumb. He checked the style and size of Daddy's shoes when they met, and bought identical shoes. Then he invited Tom to his restaurant and drugged Tom. After Tom became unconscious, he put on gloves, grabbed Tom's hands to hold the murder knife and leave fingerprints. He wore the shoes identical to Daddy's and brought Tom to Daddy's home. In this way, only Tom's fingerprints would be found on the knife, and only Tom's and Daddy's shoe prints would be found in that room. No one would know he had been there. He was the one who made the police report. He knew how long the effects of the drug would last and deliberately made the police arrive there before Tom woke up. So the locked room could be confirmed by the police. Matt spreads his hands, but we still don't know the solution to the locked room. Gideon replies, I'll go back to my office and think it over. When Gideon drives you to his office, you say, I feel the footstep sound played by Daddy's phone was related to the way Joe created the lock room. Gideon is stunned and shrugs his shoulders. Really? I'm not sure. After seeing his reaction, you feel more worried about Tom, cause Gideon may be up to his old tricks. 
He'll hide the truth and let the case become unsolved. After you arrive at Gideon's office, he asks you to clean the office and remind you to stay away from the bookshelves again. Then he goes out and you secretly follow him. He disguises himself to enter Joe's restaurant, sits at table 5, and secretly shines a mini forensic light source on the table. However, it seems he hasn't found anything. Then he walks into the restroom. You recall Tom said he had taken a dump in the restroom and wonder if Gideon will find any evidence there. At the same time, you are worried Gideon will hide or destroy the evidence. But this kind of behavior will throw his best friend in jail. Will he still do it? Gideon walks out of the restroom with a smile on his face. You think he has found something. Next, he leaves the restaurant and secretly follows the murderer in the previous case. You guess he'll punish the murderer in his own way again, and it means you have time to uncover Gideon's secrets completely. You rush back to the office, lock the door, move the bookshelves away, and enter the secret room. You open the bottom drawer where the red cloth was, and discover the red cloth was a vintage skirt. There's also a detective storybook in the drawer. The book was published 23 years ago when Gideon was 7. Gideon's classmate said Gideon's mom ran away with another man when they were in first grade. Does the red skirt belong to Gideon's mom? And why has he kept this storybook? You hear car noises and hurriedly move the bookshelves back. Luckily, Gideon is unaware of your act. Several days later, you secretly read the lab report sent to him. The report confirms the fingerprints Gideon sent to them matched Tom's fingerprints. Now you have enough clues to solve the case. How did Joe achieve the locked room murder? Please share your opinion in the comments section below. And information on the answer video is in video description. Thank you.